Welcome to St. Andrew Presbyterian Church of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I am and we all are so pleased that you have chosen and joined with us this morning. When you see the scripture, please read it together. And when you see the hymn, please sing wherever you are. This is another show. This is the worship of our Almighty God. So please join with us in your heart and your mind and worship our Almighty God together. And another one, this is a Prudential Boarding Week. Uh, we continue to pray for the peace in the boat. We continue to pray for the harmony in the boat. And we continue to pray that wherever the result came, it just bring the United States all together. So may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, especially United States now. So let us prepare our heart and minds to worship our Almighty God as we receive this morning's prayerhood. And please join with me call to worship this morning. Hope in the God of life. Trust in the God of the ages. Believe in the Christ of love. Trust in the Christ of healing. Come, 
Let your faith bring hope and wholeness. Please join with me time of confession, solemn prayer, and assurance of God's pardon. Let us acknowledge our dependence on God. Healer and giver of life, we come to you bent down with the poverty of our mistakes. The emptiness of dreams unfulfilled blurs our vision. The sorrow of sins committed burdens our souls. The works not completed and the gifts not shared haunt our lives. Forgive us and renew us, gracious God. Heal us and make us whole. Sons and daughters of God, your faith has made you well. We can go in peace, as forgiven and beloved children of God. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. The, the peace, peace of, of Christ, Christ be, be with, with you. you. May the 
peace of Christ be with you. Peace, peace of Christ, Christ be with you. Peace be with you. And now our reading from the book of Revelations, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. We have been reading through the book of Exodus and concluded last Sunday with the last chapter of Deuteronomy, the second giving of the law, paralleling Exodus. And today we move on to the book of Joshua, chapter 3, beginning with verse 7. Now the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you, in the sight of all Israel, so that they may know that I will be with you as I was with Moses. You are the one who shall command the priest to bear the Ark of the Covenant. Now when you come to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, 
you shall stand still in the Jordan. And Joshua then said to the Israelites, draw near, hear the words of the Lord your God. And skipping down to verse 14. Now when the people set out from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant were in the front of the people. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. So when those who bore the Ark had come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priest bearing the ark were dipped in the edge of the water. The waters flowing from above stood still, rising up in a single heap far off at Adam, the city that is beside Zarethan. Now while those flowing toward the sea of the Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, were wholly cut off, then the people crossed over opposite Jericho. And while all Israel were crossing over on dry land, the priest who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. Here ends our reading today from the book of Joshua chapter 3, beginning with verse 7. Thanks be to God. I attend a, a Zoom meeting every week, uh, usually at 1 o'clock on Tuesdays. And uh, because of some conflicts, it had to be moved back an hour for a week or two. And I just got the notice that we are going back to our normal schedule, one o'clock. That word caught my eye, normal. Six, seven months of the pandemic, and we are back to normal. Of course, they meant back to the usual time. But life is anything but normal, and I am probably living as close to normal as anybody. I, I don't have to worry about losing a job or losing income. I, I don't have to worry about uh, having kids in school and all of the changes going on. I, I am not pastoring a, a sizable church that's having to struggle with decisions about program and worship and whether to be in person or online. I, I'm not having any of that. But life is far from normal, even, even for me, even for me. And look at what's going on in our world. I, I feel relatively secure, but then I get to thinking, you know, if the President of the United States could catch this virus, if, if the Vice President's staff could catch this virus, what's keeping me from catching this virus? Sooner or later, I'm going to interact with someone that has that virus. The numbers keep grow, going up day after day after day. And even if you ignore the numbers out of Washington or Oklahoma City or even the local health department, in the Sunday paper, there was an advertisement by St. Francis Hospital, and they showed their own patient count for people with the virus from 50-something in March to 130-something last week. The numbers are getting worse and worse. So there's the virus, and then of course we're all aware of the election that is coming up and, and, and the dissension and difficulties that that has caused. And, and I think politicians tend to see this as Every election is the most important election in our lifetime. But uh, even uh, people that have 
been involved with elections for years have sensed a, a, a difficulty with the election this year. One article said that <clears throat> this is the end of democracy. To many Americans, the future looks dark if either other side wins. So it's not simply uh, an election. It says, heading into election day, partisans view each other, not just as opponents, but as deeply evil. Supporters of either catastrophic socialism, on the one hand, or devastating totalitarianism, on the other. So we have the virus that we might all catch. We have the election with those sense of, of uncertainty. We have the, the economic problems. And I keep thinking, how many trillions of dollars are we spending as a government? And that's got to stop at some point. We can't just keep throwing money at the problem. So the virus, the politics, the economics, it causes you to be awake at three o'clock in the morning, doesn't it? Perhaps then we can put ourselves in the place of the Israelites as we have been following them from leaving Egypt, moving toward the promised land. And Exodus is really over. Exodus is the exit from Egypt, moving through the wilderness, and the people of Israel are ready, ready to move into the promised land. Well, maybe they're ready. Because Moses, we noted last week, has died and was buried, and no one knows where he was buried. He's, he's gone. That's it. Moses was the people's spokesman to God and from God to, to know that God is with the people and, and providing for their needs. And Moses is gone. Moses is gone. Now, it is true, as we noted last week, that Moses wrote out the covenant, wrote out the laws, wrote out the, the teaching, instruction, guidance to be preserved for the people throughout the years. So he provided for them after his death. And he trained up Joshua as his assistant to become the leader of the people after he was gone. But you know, how, how can you be sure that Joshua is a capable leader? How can you be sure that Joshua has the ear of God? How can you be sure Joshua will convey the words of God to the people? How, how can you know? How can you know? And so I suspect the people of Israel were also awake at three in the morning with their brains working like a hamster squirrel cage, thinking about what is the future for us? Or do we even have a future? And so God came to the people and came to Joshua as we will see God still comes to us. God came to Joshua and said, I will begin to exalt you. I will begin to show my force and power through you for the people so that they will know that you are their leader and they will know that I am with you. Joshua. Joshua had the word of God undergirding, sustaining him. And it was interesting the way this worked out. If you remember, when the people left Egypt, when they 
exited from Egypt. They came to the Red Sea and they were, they were boxed in. They couldn't go any further. The, the Egyptian chariots and soldiers were coming after them. They would be wiped out. And then God provided a path through the water. Here, God says to Joshua, as you enter the promised land, I will provide a path through the Jordan so that you may cross on dry land. You won't even get your feet wet and you can cross into the land that I promised. In the Red Sea, there were two different explanations kind of woven together. One, a kind of a naturalistic explanation where God sent an east wind that blew the, the, the sea back. And then the other one where God set up a wall of water and they crossed on dry land. And, and then there was also a natural and a supernatural explanation of the defeat of the chariots of Egypt. On the one hand, they were mired down in the muddy sea bottom. And on the other, the waters came back and closed them over. But as I said then, it doesn't matter if you take a natural or a supernatural explanation. What is important to know is that God provided a way across the sea for them. And here at the Jordan, it says that the priest with the ark went into the water and stayed there, and the waters down river drained off into the Dead Sea. The waters above stood up in a heap. Sounds like the walls of water at the Red Sea, doesn't it? But think about that. It, it, it says that the water stood up at a heap some distance away. So in other words, they didn't actually see those waters. They thought it was God's provision, and that's all they needed to know. Could have been, what, a beaver dam? I don't even know if they have beavers. Could have been a, a rock slide blocking the way. It doesn't matter because what the story wants us to know is that God, God provided the way. As God brought them out of Egypt, now God is bringing them into the promised land through the waters, through the waters. It says that God will begin to show the people his power through Joshua begin. It's a little word, but it reminds us that this isn't the end. This is the beginning of a new chapter in the life of Israel. God will be with them. God will get them to where they need to go. God will begin to work through Joshua, but there's a lot more to the story ahead. In the first chapter of the book of Joshua, it says, I think, four different times to Joshua as he is becoming the leader of the people to replace Moses, to lead them across the Jordan into the promised land. Be strong. Take courage. I am with you says the Lord. Be strong. Take courage. I am with you. Be strong. Take courage. I am with you. Be strong. Take courage. I am with you. As the people entered the promised land, the story goes on. They set up a monument, 12 stones, to remind them of their crossing. They celebrated the Passover for the first time in the promised land. And then <clears throat> it says in Joshua, the manna ceased. 
They had lived by God's provision of bread and water all these years, and now the manna ceases. They are given the land, and they are to use it to provide for their own needs. But God still is taking care of them. Be strong. Take courage. I am with you, says the Lord. In the reading from the New Testament today, from the book of Revelation, we hear about uh, the, some of the strange visions that John of Patmos had. You know, sometimes they seem almost like nonsense, but they convey a deeper truth. For example, it, it, it says that all these people will gather at the throne of God and they will wash their robes in the blood of the lamb and be sparkling white. Does that make sense? To wash something in blood and having it turn out white? Well, no, no, it really doesn't. Back when my sons were younger and my wife was uh, teaching school, I, I tried to help out with the housework. I'm not very good at it, but uh, I, I discovered that if they got off to school, if I put a load of wash in in the morning, I could take it out at noon and put it in the dryer, put another one in, and we wouldn't have this huge pile of laundry to do on Saturday. Well, you know, you have to learn how to do laundry. I mean, it's not quite as simple as it sounds. In fact, the first thing I did was wash some of my white dress shirts with one of Mickey's red sweaters. I then had a bunch of pink dress shirts. So you have to learn. You have to learn. And, and I think about that with the book of Revelation. When it says that, that they washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb, they're not talking about laundry. They are talking about God's giving of his son sacrificially for you and for me. And in that giving, in the blood of the lamb, we know God and we can approach the throne of mercy. It's not about separating colors in the laundry, is it? It is about the grace of God that has protected and sustained and brought God's people before the throne of grace. And it says there will be people from all over the world, every race, every people, every nationality, every language, all brought together before the throne of God to glorify God and to worship God and to enjoy God forever. Joshua led the people of Israel. In the coming of Jesus Christ, we know that that love of God, that promise of God, that provision of God reached out to everyone all over the world. Every nationality, every race, every language, every ethnic group, all of God's people. Today, Today is All Saints Day. That's not a, a holiday that we Presbyterians have um, observed until the last few years. And, and oftentimes it was a reminder of uh, the saints, the Christians, members of the church who have died in the previous year. And we, we look back in memory. But All Saints Day is also a way of reminding ourselves of the grace of God that has reached out to everyone, everyone. You know, unfortunately, because of the way history evolved, sometimes people think of Christian faith as a Western European religion that somehow spread out to other places. In a way, that's true. But before it was common in 
Western Europe. It began in Israel, in Palestine, and, and it spread all over the place. You know, there are Christians in India, in the Martoma Church, that trace their ancestry back to St. Thomas, Mar being saint, St. Thomas the Apostle. There are Christians in Egypt. There are Christians in the Near East. There were Christians that got as far as China in the early days of the church. Joshua, Joshua was called by God to lead the people of Israel. And we continue that call, reaching out to people all over the world and throughout time with the word for Joshua. Be strong. Take courage. I am with you. In the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the economic problems, in the midst of the election and the politicking, be strong. Take courage. Know that the Lord our God is with us. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, there are times when you seem far away There are times when we become anxious or even scared, afraid of this virus, afraid of the economics of this day, afraid that our party, our person won't get elected. We become afraid. Help us, Lord, by your Spirit to hear the words to Joshua and your word to us. Be strong. Take courage. For we know you are with us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
On this All Saints Day, as we come to the Lord's table, we are especially aware that we are united with God's people all over the world and throughout time because all of those who follow Jesus are invited to come. Come share in the banquet that he has prepared for his people. This is indeed the joyful feast of the people of God. According to the Gospel of Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples in Emmaus, he took bread, blessed it and broke it, gave it to them, and their eyes were open, and they recognized their Lord. This is indeed the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all who trust in him to share in the feast that has been prepared. Our book of order says the opportunity to eat and drink with Christ is not a right bestowed upon the worthy, but a privilege given to the undeserving who come in faith, repentance, and love. Come, come to the table. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, creator of the universe. You formed us in your image, setting us in this world to love and to serve you and to live in peace with your whole creation. When we rebelled against you, refusing to trust and obey you, you did not reject us, but still claimed us as your own. You sent prophets to call us back to your way. Then in the fullness of time, out of your great love for the world, you sent your only son to be one of us, to redeem us and heal our brokenness. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the faithful of every time and place, who say to the glory of your name, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Thank you for Jesus, for his teaching and healing, for his challenging and feeding, for his living and dying and rising, that we might be raised with him and all the world made new. We thank you that on the night before he died, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and shared it with his friends. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and wine, gifts of the good earth, offering ourselves as a living sacrifice dedicated to your service, for great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your gathered people and on these gifts, bread and wine of earth, to body and blood of heaven, our frail flesh and blood for your holy people, that we might be Christ's body to your world. For this world we now pray, aid our response to the coronavirus, Heal the gap of social isolation, cure disease, guide our leaders and officials, help us respond to raging fires and inclement weather, end all war, mend your wounded earth, heal those who suffer, comfort those who mourn, and infuse us with your peace that is rooted in what is just. Through the power of your spirit, unite us with Christ and with one another as we work and wait in hope confident in that day when Christ will come to make all things well, and we will feast together at his heavenly table. All glory and honor are yours, holy God, through Christ and in the unity of the Spirit, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. As Jesus taught his disciples to pray, 
Let us join together in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Listen now to the words of institution of the Lord's Supper uh, from the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Apostle Paul says, every time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you are proclaiming the saving death of our Lord until he comes again. As Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples. So I take this bread, which has been blessed and broken, and say to you, take, eat, this is for you. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for many for the remission of sin. All of you drink a bit. Paul says, as often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we are proclaiming Christ's saving death until he comes again. The same way after supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is for you. All of you drink a bit. Let us bow together in prayer. Gracious, abundant God, as we wait for the fulfillment of your desires for your creation, even now at this table, in this meal, you have met us in Christ Jesus. We thank you for feeding us with the bread of life, for quenching our thirst with the cup of salvation as we have been nourished and strengthened here. Send us out into the world by the power of your Holy Spirit to share your life and salvation with all whom we meet. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.
On this All Saints Day, we especially think of all of you, wherever you may be this day, whether you're a part of this church, this fellowship, or scattered around the world, we are all followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. The light of Christ comes into our hearts and we seek to share that light in a world that seems very dark these days. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit abide with each one of you this day and every day. Amen. Oh, so we all.